Okay, folks, uh, Alex Woods here, civil litigator. I run a law firm in London, but I'm actually recording this vlog from an office in Warsaw because I've got a back office operation. And one of the reasons I've got this back office operation is to help keep costs down so that I can actually represent people for general litigation and also provide advice and assistance in respect of small claims. Now, this is quite a simple and straightforward issue, although it does show up and kind of like illustrate the fact that it, it's not easy, even if you're you know, running a small value claim, to sometimes to navigate through the complexities of the white book and the civil procedure rules. Have a look below to the links in the description box for the relevant civil procedure rules, which is the Bible when it comes to civil litigation. Now, this website, this YouTube channel, is dedicated towards providing you know, advice and assistance in respect of general litigation and small claims that's actually real, up-to-date, current, and being given by someone who has got practical, live experience of running litigation. And, uh, there's been, it's been an incredibly busy week, but I, I want to keep uh, knocking out these uh, advice videos because they're important to me as a business and uh, and as I say the law changes over time so it's important to keep this YouTube channel uh, current and up-to-date. Now uh, this is a case that comes about because I've recently been instructed just for a small level of advice and assistance in someone who's bringing their own small claim against an estate agent and this is the second time I've had an estate agent case come up in about, about the last three to six months and it seems as if estate agents are now actually putting quite uh, what's the word aggressive for want of, of a better word clauses into where they uh, represent where they offer a letting service to owners of properties uh, or whether, whether whether it's managed or whether it's just you know advertising and these clauses basically run over time and I think a lot of people, unsophisticated people who own their own property, let's say, want to use an estate agent to advertise and perhaps to manage it, what they don't realise is that they often sign up at the beginning of a contract to a clause which says if that estate agent finds you a tenant, uh, then the their, their cut, their commission, whatever it is, I think it's 10% in this instance in the first year, dropping to 8 and then 6 in years 2 and 3 you know that that commission rolls and it can depending upon the clause depending upon the, the the agreement can roll on indefinitely so that the estate agent is enjoying uh, profits from having found that original tenant you know it's business isn't it and i guess the estate agents like everybody is trying to make a, a buck in this day and age and so they I, i've you know i've seen a couple of these tenancy agreements come up quite recently now the reason it's relevant in this case is because you know, it's quite a complex co co contract and the, the estate agent has brought a small claim against my client, a claim, a claim of, of under £10,000 against my client for unpaid commission. And my client has got various arguments relating to you know, verbal agreements that were made over and above the paperwork but also the paperwork itself is you know quite complex it's a 13 page agreement and they came to me and therefore they need more time to file a defense in fact he's also producing a counterclaim so he wants to file which means send to the court and serve which means send to your opponent a defense and counterclaim in response to this claim now time frames you have 14 days but if you file an acknowledgement of service in 14 days you have 28 days from the date of issue the date of deemed service the date of issue but don't worry about the complexities just look at the date of issue on the court document if you filed an acknowledgement of service within 14 days you of date of issue you've got 28 days to get your defense in but in this instance that's not been enough time ran over the Easter break and blah 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 there are other reasons uh, so, you can ap apply for an extension, an extra 28 days on top of the first 28, okay? Now, when you, and it's laid out in the CPR, and it's very commonplace, and where solicitors are instructed, 
if, if an opponent in a case of mine says, can I have an extra 28 days to file my defence, I'm going to say yes. Because if I don't say mm. yes, unless there's some really good reason or big prejudice caused, if, if, if I don't say yes, they're going to apply to court for an extension, and the court's going to look at the paperwork and say, hmm, can't see any reason why the defendant can't have an extra 28 days. Costs against you for not agreeing to the extension. Okay, so in this instance, the, the opponent, the estate agent, as often happens where parties that aren't represented by lawyers, it just simply said, no, it's outrageous, um, and given their arguments as to why the defend, it, it, they, they're not going to agree to a 28-day extension. Relevant part is part 15 of the civil procedure rules, but as I say, it's all linked below. Now, uh, my client now has to, having obviously, you've got to prepare the ground before you make an application to court, but my client has sort of, you know, explained to his opponent, look, I needed time, I needed to take legal advice, it's complex, and here's the critical thing, I don't believe any prejudice has been caused to you. And if no prejudice has been caused to your opponent, and in this instance, an estate agent who, you know, has been waiting a year for this money, an extra 20, just issues a claim, an extra 28 days is going to hurt nobody, at least of all him. So in his instance, no real prejudice has been caused. So that's been laid out in the email correspondence. An application has been threatened, and we've said to our opponent, look, you may well have to pay the cost of that application because we don't think your refusal is reasonable. Uh, and that application has, has now been sent off. Now, there's an application fee, £255. You need to fill in an N244 form. Um, and then you send that off and you put your arguments into the body, into the box of the application form, or if that won't fit into a separate piece of paper attached. Send two copies to the court so they can send one copy to your opponent. But in any event, when you make the application to the court, always copy in your opponent. Don't try and trick them or anything stupid like that. So that application has been made. It's cost uh, my client £255. We're just advising. We're not representing this client. He's running the case himself. And uh, But we've also tagged on an hour of my time, £150 plus VAT. Uh, and when it, if and when it comes to court, we've asked for the, the court actually to adjudicate this without a hearing based on just the paperwork that we've submitted with the application and anything that the defendant might now send to, sorry, the claimant might now send to the court, the estate agent might now send to the court and ask him to grant the extension, which I think he'll, the, the, the court will do, and to make an order against our opponent for the costs, the court fee of 255 and the 150 plus fat for the legal advice that was needed to help my client uh, negotiate and navigate through the CPR essentially. So hopefully that explains to you how to apply for an extension. To conclude, unless there's really good reason, unless there's obvious prejudice caused to your opponent by delay, and that's in very few cases in general litigation where you know, you're just claiming for a sum of money, Unless that is the case, then your opponent should grant you an extension of 28 days. So that gives you a total of 56 days to file and to serve your defence, and in this instance also a counterclaim. If they don't agree, you warn them in email correspondence, and then you make an application and you ask the court to review it, probably without a hearing. Cases will change one from the next but probably without a hearing, because you don't want to spend time and money on this small issue, uh, and you ask the court to order costs against your opponent. That will give you a good start in the battle. And actually, you always want to look at the plus side of this. You might initially be worried about making an application, but it actually telegraphs to your opponent that you are serious about this claim, about defending this claim, and you're not going away, which might well bring them to the negotiating table. That's all for now. If you need uh, legal advice and assistance, uh, the information is on is on the screen. Go. We've got a, a website up and running now called the Small Claims, uh, you know, to, to to deal with small claims, small claims support service, 
and you'll find plenty of information on that website and as I say also on the Redwood Legal Information YouTube channel. Bye for now.